We have this covered from all sides. So let's bring in Kevin Walling, Democratic campaign advisor, David Bonson, a National Review contributor and author of the new book, Elizabeth Warren, How Her Presidency Would Destroy the Middle Class and the American Dream. And Juan Williams, my colleague from The Five, Fox News political analyst as well. Uh, Kevin, let me start with you. I want you to listen to something from Joe Biden last night that was not about division. Take a listen. Well, I can't hold a grudge. I have to be able to not only fight, but also heal. And as president of the United States, that's what I will attempt to do, notwithstanding that we're going to be more division after he's defeated by me this next time. Joe Biden, I think, wanted to kind of like do no harm last night. How do you think he did? I think he did great, Dana. You know, I, to your point, it, his whole program has been to do no harm on these debates. Uh, and he's playing clearly to the Iowa electorate. It's older. It's wider. It remember, remembers with a longing the years of Barack Obama when things would actually get done and bipartisanship was the, the uh, name of the game. So he's making a really smart play, I think, by talking even about taking on a Republican as a running mate uh, in a play for these voters that want some return to normalcy on the campaign but trail. But why? Can you imagine if... if if Biden were to say that he would take on a Republican now, right, for as a running mate, what would that do to the progressive base? They would just would they just stay home? I think they would be alarmed. I don't think there's any question. But I think the fact that he said it to pick up on what David was saying is a real gesture, a real signature in terms of most Democratic voters. Remember, he's got a big lead on the national scene. He doesn't have it in Iowa, but he's within the margin of error. Same thing in New Hampshire. And I think he's saying to Iowa voters who may be undecided, and there's a large cohort of Iowa voters who are undecided, if you're serious about defeating Donald Trump, and that's the number one uh, agenda item for Democrats, here's someone who is saying, I can reach out to those independents and moderate mm -hmm. Republicans and bring them into the fold. Well, of course, everybody, David, yesterday, you've just written a book about Elizabeth Warren, and everyone was looking for that uh, tension between Warren and Sanders. They got some of it, certainly, a little bit later in the debate as well. Take a listen to what she said about women winning elections. Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. The only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and true. me. So true. How do you think that'll play, David? Yeah, there's nothing more impressive than a Democratic woman being able to win in Massachusetts, uh, uh, taking <laughs> Ted Kennedy's seat. But I, I think I think that moment played well. I think some of the follow-up was a little more awkward. My criticism of her performance last night is, again, their refusal to go after Biden. The Warren Sanders thing is out there. I'm not sure that what she's done going after Bernie this week has helped her at all. I think, basically, that whole thing about Bernie said a woman can't win has backfired on her. But I, at some point, you have to go after who's in first place. And that's what I learned in 2016 is time and time again, I saw the third place guy going after the fourth place guy. Biden's in the lead mm -hmm. and they're not laying a glove on him. And if they want to be president, they're going to have I to. I want to ask more. Kevin, you, I want to ask you about this because there was somebody else that's running for president. He wasn't on the debate stage, but he's still very much in it. Take a listen to Michael Bloomberg, who was on TV last night. I didn't learn anything. Right. He said, she said. Yeah. Right. Okay. I suppose it's good theater, but it w didn't address the issues of the country and what they would do. Mm -hmm. And they're not really debates. There's pre-canned sound bites. Everybody wants to say something that doesn't get them in trouble or does start a controversy mm -hmm. that's been pre-scripted and they think is good. Oh, so, so, so he's not able to debate because he's not taking contributions, so he gets, gets to stay above the fray? Yeah, he gets a free ride pretty much. I would like to see Mike Bloomberg on that debate stage. I'm hopeful that the DNC changes their rules and, and takes out that financial requirement in terms of grassroots donors because he's now polling at 5 6% nationwide. We know he's willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars every week, every other week on this campaign, and he should be able to face some of the criticism of this field on that debate stage. Well, yeah, we'll see. I mean, but he's asking... Juan, he's asking the DNC to change the rules after the game has already been started. True. I don't think the rules are going to change. And I think that you've got to remember, there's a lot of anger at Mike Bloomberg among Democrats who say, hey, billionaires like Tom Steyer, who was on stage last night, have bought their way into this campaign. He's at five or six percent because of the power of his advertising. It's not because of the power of personality or ideas. What about David? Uh, you talk about in your book, your book title is uh, talks about the middle class. So the economy, by almost every metric, 
doing very well. So how can any of these Democrats try to fight against that? I think it's a very bad political idea. You know from 2004 when Kerry tried to make the economy an issue for President Bush and it just didn't work because people didn't feel like the economy was bad. If they're going to try to run off, the middle class is hurting and the middle class says our wages are going up, our, our IRAs are going up, the stock market's doing well. Overall, I think there's plenty of room within the econ economic categories to try to go after, but the macro story is too positive. I don't think that that narrative that Warren really got popular on is going to play. What, about, what do you think about that? How would, like, so you are, you're a strategist, you're an yeah, advisor. Yeah. Like, how do you, what do you talk about if you can't really talk about the economy? Sure. I, I think David makes a good point. We can't talk about it on a macro level, but I think in, in certain communities and certain states that we need to win back, and especially in the mid, Midwest, you look at Wisconsin, you look at Michigan, you look at Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. States have been ravaged, especially in terms of uh, manufacturing, for example. We're at lower levels than we were under Barack Obama in terms of the manufacturing sector. I think there's a case to Try be to make made that case. by Democrats. Joe Biden touched a little bit on that in terms of job retraining, uh, work with unions. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's where those, that, that those fights are going to be in exactly. those, so in those states. You've got to keep that in mind. Yeah. I loved having you here, Kevin, David, and Juan. Juan, I'll see you in a couple of hours. All right. Thanks, David.